There's no doubt about it. Heath Ledger was an amazing actor who was tragically taken from us well before his time. Considered one of the most impressive actors of his generation, by just 28, he'd already achieved an impressive body of work, culminating in his career highlight, winning the Oscar for his chilling performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight. Born in Perth, Heath discovered his passion and talent for drama as a teenager. After bit parts on Aussie TV series like Home and Away, at only 19, he found success in the US on the TV show Raw. Raw was like a big advertisement for me, you know. It, it, the iron was hot in America, so I thought I'd pack up and go over there and strike and give it a go. And after a while, I was there for about 10 months, and it took a while, and um, it just came through, you know, persistence and um, picking the right jobs. Following the success of 10 Things I Hate About You, where he played the good-looking bad boy, Heath was on his way to being typecast as a teen heartthrob. Not happy with this, he instead chose roles that interested him and challenged him as an actor. In Two Hands, he played a Sydney teenager who finds himself in trouble with a local gangster. Director Gregor Jordan was blown away by Heath's skills and his approach to filmmaking. Not only is he sort of good at understanding text, um, and, 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 and really good at sort of, um, you know, finding, you know, you know, really sort of nutting out the subtext and things like that and, and finding the essence of the scene and, um, and coming up with good ideas. He's also a fantastic technical actor, like he's got a, he's really good with his voice um, and you know, his enunciation and everything. He, he always, just basic things, like he spoke clearly, you could understand him. Um, he, he'd hit marks so that it wouldn't look like he was hitting a mark. He, you know, knew about cam camera sizes. He knew how to give cutting, you know, great little cutting points. Heath was very committed to his craft and enjoyed the process of creating different characters for his films. To avoid being typecast, he'd take on varied and contrasting roles, giving the Middle Ages a modern touch in A Knight's Tale and earning critical acclaim as a suicidal son in Monster's Ball. In The Four Feathers, he played a cowardly soldier who resigns from the British Army to avoid being sent to war and then tries to find a way to regain his honour. At first glance of the script, it's a, it's a brilliant read anyway. You know, the character's there, the journey of the character, it was exciting. Um, there was a smorgasbord of emotions that I could, I felt that I could present to the character, you know, in other words, I knew how to play it. And Shaker Kapoor. Um, I loved his movies and uh, I, I, when I once I'd met him, he, I discovered how passionate he is about making movies and I just wanted to be a part of that. Always focused on his character's journey, Heath drew on the physical challenges of shooting the battle scenes to help make his performance convincing. It was physically gruelling, um, but then that, that made it easier in front of camera because the story was physically grueling, you know, so I just used that. I, you know, I used the climate, I used the atmosphere that we were in and just adapted it to what was on the page. And uh, so it helped me out, you know, all these things were tools to use. Heath returned to Australia in 2003 to play one of our most famous and beloved outlaws, Ned Kelly. I've been a really big fan of, of what he stood for. Uh, what he was about, his ethic, his morals. Uh, you know, I'd read his Geraldry letter quite a few times and just how passionate he was in there and so definite and precise and how sure he was about his cause. Heath was nervous about playing such an iconic character, but he was determined to show us the man beneath that famous armour. I had an idea in my head. I, you know, I, I read up on him. I, I looked into his eyes, into that portrait. There's a portrait of him two days before he's hung and it's all in his eyes he's very dignified he's very proud it's, and and that was enough just looking in his eyes was enough and so i just took that and uh and just trust my own instinct and went for it and uh, kind of closed off the fact that there's all these people that are inter interested and and that there are all these pressures to, to uh, you know live up to his story when choosing film projects Heath felt it was a waste of time if he wasn't constantly testing himself and exploring different cinematic genres. The Brothers Grimm gave him the opportunity to test his comedic skills for the first time. For me personally, I mean, it's, it's been a real opportunity to leap out of my skin and I've had, I've had, I've had an absolute ball. Um, I've just, I've gone for it. I've had no shame whatsoever. <laughs> and, um, 
and that's a gift from Terry because uh, uh, playing comedy and, and, and feeling uh, comfortable and free enough to express yourself in these ways or to these extremes, you have to really trust the person who's, who, who's directing you because, you know, you got to trust that they know what to pick and <laughs> stuff to use because while when you're going to such extremes, there's so much... <laughs> There's so much bad stuff you go through. You've got to be bad to be good. In Brokeback Mountain, Ledger continued to push himself out of his comfort zone. His heartbreaking performance not only proved that he was one of the most determined and versatile talents of his generation, but it also earned him his first Oscar nomination. Well, the reason I knew I could play Innes is... Um, I knew Innes uh, had a hard time coming to grips with his sexuality coming to grips with the fact that he had love for Jack Twist. And I knew I would find it hard having to portray those scenes myself. Um, I knew I would personally, um, and not being gay, I knew that would be a challenge for me. And I knew that I could use that to my advantage. I knew that I could use my personal fears in playing this role. Um, and I could parallel them to Innes's fears in playing out his love and uh, acting upon his love. And so that's why I knew I could do it. Unlike his character Innes, when Heath found love, he acted upon it straight away. On the set of Brokeback Mountain, he met and fell in love with co-star Michelle Williams. They later had a daughter, Matilda. With star status and many film accolades, you would assume Heath would ooze self-confidence. However, he was actually painfully shy, and when cast in a particular role, his insecurities often took hold, and he would question his acting capabilities. It's, it's a pattern of mine going into any film that once I get or win the role, I uh, instantly believe that I shouldn't be doing it, I can't do it, and that I've fooled them, and, um, and I, I try and find a way out, um, which I did on this. Um, but my agent, he's, uh, he's onto it. You know, he, he recognises it as a pattern, and I do now too. You know, I understand it's a necessary part of um, me and, and, and the way I wrangle myself into concentrating and focusing on, you know, on the job and trying to do my best, is essentially trying to, to defeat myself and my own anxieties. Following the acclaim he received for Brokeback Mountain, Heath was definitely on Hollywood's A-list. But instead of taking on a huge blockbuster, Heath chose to go back to his roots, returning to Australia to play a tortured heroin addict in Candy. I thought the screenplay that Luke Davies and Neil Arfield wrote uh, from the novel, I thought was um, uh, very good. Uh, <clears throat> I think the idea of going back to Australia also and, and shooting a film using my own accent was um, attractive. I hadn't done that for eight years, so I was looking forward to being liberated uh, uh, from the restraints of having to perform with an accent. One of Heath's most memorable and scariest roles was his Oscar-winning performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight. To create this chilling and frightening character, he hid himself away in a hotel room for six weeks to isolate himself and really delve into the deranged mind of the villain. I met with Heath and um, he really seemed to relate to what I was talking about. He seemed to understand how this character could be extraordinarily frightening and fresh and, and different than, than anything that had been done before. Heath's last film was The Imaginarium of Dr. Panassus. Mid-shoot, he was found dead in his apartment from an accidental overdose to prescription drugs. Production on the set was shut down and many believed the film would never be finished. Production resumed months later after director Terry Gilliam realised he could use the film's fantasy premise to his advantage, adapting Heath's character so that his appearance would change in each imaginary world he visits. Johnny Depp, Jude Law and Colin Farrell all agreed to complete Ledger's role, donating their fee to his daughter, Matilda. No, 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 I just gave up when he died. I just thought, that's it, it's over. Uh, it wasn't, I didn't know how we could finish the film when your star dies in the middle of the movie, and I wasn't even sure if I wanted to finish the film because we were having a great time working with Heath. He was the reason, you know, we got this baby going, and I thought, he's not here, so let's just go home. And then my daughter, and my cinematographer, they wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> 
they, they kept attacking me and said, off your ass, let's go, we've got to save this thing. Heath's last work is not going to end up on some cutting room floor somewhere. And that was as simple as that, so they beat me until I started thinking again. Heath was well known and respected for his passion and skill as an actor, and he was generous on set, bringing out the best in his co-stars. Uh, he's such, such a giving actor, giving person. Uh, uh, like if we're doing a scene together, uh, I would do my close-up and he would just still, he would still be up behind camera, sorry, he would still be behind camera and still playing Tony. Um, so that makes you feel more comfortable and you can portray what you're, you're there to do. Um, and it just helps. There was something so instinctive about his, his acting. And it's just joy, is it joy in acting. It wasn't like some people would get all neurotic and everything. No, he would just leap into there. He would energize everybody. When we were doing Parnassus, we would just stand back each time Heath would go on, on uh, in front of the camera and just marvel at what he was pulling off because he was surprising us. Every minute he was surprising us with what he was doing. Sadly taken so early on in life, Heath Ledger will not only be remembered for the wonderful characters he created for the big screen, but also through his gorgeous daughter Matilda, who is the spitting image of her father. Stay tuned to Star Picks for more of the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcasting glorious high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. It's altogether better on screen and at mnc.tv.